Next time. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to throw you the biggest possible challenge derivation, right? And then uh, you are going to work in groups to see how, how you do, and then I'll go around. But let us start first with the, with the, with the mapping. Second mapping, I, I let you, so it is the following. Mapping number two. So let me see. So the idea was to have, we have an ensemble, um, uh, an ensemble of n times n uh, symmetric real matrices. And suppose that we have one A which belongs to this ensemble. And let us denote as lambda vector A, the spectrum of A. And then we introduce this, the following random variable. If A is random, the spectrum is random. Yeah? So I can introduce the following object that I don't like, I sub n of, of what? Of x as the sum for i from 1 to n of the Kronecker delta, sorry, of the theta, theta heavy side function, state function of x minus lambda i. Okay. And this was, was giving you the number of eigenvalues to the left of the real number x, right? Or x is a real number. Now, again, so if the matrix is random, the spectrum is random, therefore this is a random variable. The, 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 one way to fully characterize that random variable is to, cal is to calculate either its distribution or the moment generating function or the cumulant generating function, right? For that, so the idea is if A is random, is random, this implies that, of course, the spectrum is random, is random, which implies that this is a random variable, right? So again, to fully, kind of more or less fully capture the statistical properties of these random variables we introduced. It's a moment generating function that we denoted a g sub x of mu as the average over the randomness in the ensemble of random matrices of the exponential of mu i sub n of x. Yeah, this, this is what I gave you, no? And the challenge was to be able to express this thing as a stack mech problem uh, or a stack mech system. All right? So to, f to manipulate this expression in such a way that partition functions will appear, and then you have to do average over partition functions. Cool? Did you manage to do this? No, shall we do it together? And then I'll give you the big challenge for today, like kind of an exam without preparing, yeah? Is that okay? So how, how we do it is, is the following. So the only thing we have to remember, so again, so the idea is I start with a definition, supposing, supposing I have an spectrum, and then I want to get to an expression where I get rid of the spectrum and I express everything in terms of the matrix. So then I can apply a replica method, Kavithi method, etc. So it's a way to overcome the necessity of having the spectrum of a given matrix, right? So uh, the identity we have to use is the following one, that the, the heavy side function, theta of minus x, can be written as the limit, eta going to 0 plus, of 1 divided by 2 pi, 1 divided by 2 pi i, of the logarithm of x plus i eta minus the logarithm of x minus i eta. Okay? If I do a mistake, you tell me, okay? Please. Very good. So this means if I use this expression over here, this means that the, the number of eigenvalues to the left of x can be written as the limit or eta going to 0 plus 
of um, okay of the uh, one divided by two pi i of the sum i from one to n of the logarithm. Have to be careful. Yeah, the logarithm of lambda a i minus x minus plus i eta minus the logarithm of lambda sub pi a plus uh, minus x minus eta, no? Minus x minus i eta. Yeah? Very good. So let me, let, let me, let me introduce the following notation. It can be a bit annoying. Let me denote as x sub eta. This is a definition as x plus i eta. Yeah? And let us denote the complex conjugate with a star, right? Like, for instance, x sub eta star would be x minus i eta. Good? So then here, the only thing I'm going to do is to put this notation, this notation for simplicity, okay? To simplify a bit things. So this is equal to the limit of eta going to zero plus of two divided, one divided by two pi i of the sum i from one to n of the logarithm of one of lambda i a minus x star eta minus the logarithm of lambda i a minus x sub eta. Right. And now I do the same trick I did for the, for, the, for the case of the spectral density. The sum of the logarithm, of the logarithm of the product, and then I have the product of eigenvalues plus something, and that's equal to the determinant of the matrix, right? So then this is equal to the limit when eta goes to zero plus, or one divided by two pi i, of the logarithm of the product of i from one to n, of lambda i a minus x star eta minus the logarithm of the product for i from one to n of lambda i a minus x eta. Good? But this can be written as follows, right? This is equal to the limit eta going to zero plus one divided by two pi i the logarithm of the determinant of a minus x eta star times the uh, identity matrix, sorry, minus the logarithm of the determinant of a minus x sub eta, the identity matrix. Yeah? So far, so good. And now notice that, you know, I don't have the spectrum anymore. I have the matrix A. So now I can write this thing as follows. No, I can write this thing as the limit eta going to zero plus of what? What can I do here? one divided by pi i, and I'm going to write this thing as follows, right? The logarithm, I'm going to use the one half, I'm going to put the logarithm of the, of the difference as the logarithm, logarithm of the ratio, yeah? And then the one half has a square root. So I have the logarithm of the square root of the, the determinant of a minus x eta star identity matrix divided by the determinant of A minus X eta identity matrix. So far so good? Yeah? And then I have a, one, a beautiful one divided, I have the square root of the determinants, no? So remember that then the one divided by square root of a determinant, symmetric uh, or a symmetric matrix, 
this can be written as a, as a partition function, remember? So this can be written as a, well, as a multivariate uh, Gaussian integral, as an integral over dnx of the exponential of minus uh, one half sum i over j from one to n, xi is i j xj. So I then I introduce uh, the idea of, the, the, of a partition function and I identify these partition functions with the square root of these determinants. That's it. That is, I introduce the following, one over the square root of the determinant of phi minus x eta, identity matrix. This is gonna be a partition function that depends on the matrix for some parameter which is uh, x eta. So therefore this, so what, well, what we have so far is the number of eigenvalues to the left of x is equal to the limit when eta goes to zero plus of one divided by pi i, the logarithm of the partition function set of phi for the parameter x eta divided by a x eta star. Yeah? So again, I, it seems that I'm complicated things, and it is true, I'm complicated <laughs> things, but uh, I want to get it into, a, into an expression where I relate a quantity of my desire with something I know how to, uh, how to calculate in a stack mech, okay? Using replica method, cavity method, etc. So far, so good. Now, this is still a random variable. Right, so given a matrix, the matrix uh, has an spectrum, and uh, this would be the number of eigenvalues. So what, what we have done is something actually kind of idiotic, right? So we started with a very sim simple expression. The simple expression was the definition of this object. So this is the number of eigenvalues to the left of x. Yeah, it's very simple, right, the definition. And we got crazy, and we, exp we expressed this as this. Okay. Now, suppose that I want to study the statistical properties of this one. In particular, for instance, studying the moment generating function. Now I have to plug this thing into here. Now from here, I have, I have to combine this result with this. Now the moment generating function, which is g sub x of mu, which is by definition exponential of mu i sub n of x. And this bar remembers that is the average over the, the probability distribution that uh, gives you the randomness in this, in this ensemble of random matrices. This would be equal to, so I plug this result into here. Of course, uh, since I'm a theoretical physicist, I, I assume that everything, everything can be exchanged, like, like limits. I can take them outside of arguments of SPR uh, and put it in front. So I assume that you can do that. So this is equal to <coughs> the limit of eta going to zero plus of what? Of the, let's do it, let's do it step by step. I'll have the exponential of a mu divided by pi i, pi i of the logarithm of this ratio of partition functions, set sub a of x eta divided by set sub a of x eta star. And then I have to do the average over the different realizations of the matrices A. And then I do something more crazy, and I said, okay, this is equal to the limit of eta going to zero plus of what? So I put the factor which is in front of the log as the power of the argument of the log, and then I have the exponential of the log, they are inverse functions. So this will give me the following. This will give me the limit when eta is zero plus of the partition function at x eta 
to the raised to the power mu divided by pi i times the partition function for a x eta star raised to the power minus mu divided by pi i and then do the average over the disorder. And then you think why you are torturing us with this, right? You all agree with me that what I'm doing is crazy. Yes, you agree with me? Why on earth we are doing this, yes? Ah, very good, very good. That, that's another, this is a very good point, actually, and you have to be very careful at some point in the derivation, right? Because it is true that uh, in, in certain functions in, in the complex planes, they are not, uh, they are multivalid functions, and of course then it happens that uh, you have to take this, uh, you know, you have to do this, uh, this computation with care. But you know the following, right? You know that this is the representation of a random variable that when s grows has to grow mono, uh, has to increase monotonically because because it is accumulating the number of eigenvalues from the left to the right so at the end of the day this will allow you to choose you know how you would do how how you how how you take from the different possible representation of the logarithm as a multivalid function which one you have to take right so this issue is not really an issue Okay, now, so everybody agrees with me that this is crazy. Very good. But now, why is this crazy? Because I started with something very simple, this thing. Then, of course, I wanted to calculate the, spec the, the statistical properties of this, the, that, that this is a random variable because, in principle, the matrix can be random. So, but this is a very simple definition. I complicate it, and then I put it here to calculate the, to get an expression of the moment function because this will capture all the, in principle, fully, all the statistical properties of this random variable, and I get to an expression where, ha where I have kind of partition functions raised to an, Im an in imaginary number. Actually, I have two partition functions raised to an imaginary number and I have to do the average over the disorder. So how do I do this? I apply the replica trick. What I do is like, I don't know, how on earth I'm going to do this expectation value. But what I can do, because this would be very difficult, but I know that if, that if this partition function uh, was raised to an integer power, this is for me very easy to do, right? So I replace this object, which is the object of my desire, by the following. I take the partition function set to, uh, of a of x eta to the power n plus, and then I take, I multiply it by the partition function with the parameter x eta star to the power n minus, where n plus minus are integers. Right? What's up? In the definition of what? No, no, in the definition is for, uh, for, any, for any complex number. Yeah, it's just in the, in the last part here. Yeah? But again, this limit must be understood in the sense of generalized functions or, 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 or distributions. Yeah? So then I take uh, n plus and n minus two integers. And now if I were to do the, the, the average over the quench disorder, this is very easy to do. So first I do this. And then I take the limit. The replica limit, but now it's a different replica limit. Now it's not the limit of the number of replicas going to zero. It's the, the two replicas, one going to plus mu divided by pi i, and the other one going to minus mu divided by pi i. And apparently, at the end of the day, you do this derivation and it works. Good. Good. 
And here, the, 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 the replica method has the same steps, right? So you use, the, you use the replica trick, which is this one. Now the replica limit is different, but then at some point to do the replica limit, you have to introduce an ansatz, an hypothesis that will allow you to analytically continue integers now to imaginary, uh, imaginary numbers. Questions? <laughs> so that's why I was torture, uh, torturing you with this, right? So it is like I would write things in such a way that I feel comfortable using techniques of spin glasses and I say, ah, I know that of a crazy trick somebody told me once that it might work in this case. Good? Now, there was something that we left last week that it was how to make this limit, right? Now, to start to doing this limit in this case, it's going to be a bit complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go a couple of step, steps back, and we are going to learn how to do this limit in a particular case, and then we'll come back to this. All right? Very good. So what is going to be the uh, exercise for today, for the rest of the day? And uh, You can work in groups. And the main goal of this, uh, of this exercise is to learn the step two of the replica method that is introducing an ansatz that will allow you to do the replica limit, either the standard one or this one. Now, so let us go to the case of uh, worrying about the uh, empirical spectral density of a matrix, right? So remember that given a matrix A, the empirical, a matrix symmetric, blah, 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 okay? The empirical spectral density associated to a matrix A this could be written as uh, minus 2 divided by pi n. Give me a second. The limit going to eta 0 plus of the imaginary part of the derivative with respect to set of the logarithm of set A of set for set equal to lambda minus i eta. Yeah? where set A of set was equal to what? Was equal to the exponential of minus a Hamiltonian. No, sorry, like what, what I was saying. Now, where this set of A was the following. Yeah, was the, that's right, that's, what, that's the integral a product of I from 1 to N of dx I divided by square root of 2 pi. Of what? Of the exponential of minus h of x. Uh, let me put it explicitly. Minus one half of the sum i and j from 1 to n of x i set times the identity matrix minus a entries i j x j. Yeah? We had something like this. Am I, am I correct? If I'm missing something, let me know. But this is the empirical spectral density given one matrix. Right? And we find, found out how to evaluate this thing using the cavity method. Suppose now that instead of having a matrix, you have a bunch of matrices that are generated by a, by a probabilistic recipe. So you have the probability of, you know, you have an ensemble of matrices and you have a probability of picking one of those matrices. So then what you want to do you want to maybe characterize not the empirical spectral density, but the average, the typical value of the empirical spectral density. That means you would like to do the empirical spectral density and the average over the different realizations of the matrix. So this means that this would be equal to the, what? This would be equal to minus 2 divided by pi n, the limit eta going to 0 plus of the imaginary part of the derivative with respect to set of the logarithm of the partition function set sub A of set, average over the different realizations of the, of the matrix in the matrix ensemble, evaluated at set equal to lambda minus i eta. Now forget about the rest of the universe, right? So here you have a beautiful a magnificent logarithm of a partition function, 
and you are trying to do the average over the matrix, which is inside the partition function and the logarithm is in between. So do you know a method that will allow you to do this, the, this expectation value easily? Replica. replica method, right? So using the replica method, very good. So using the replica method, we write this as uh, now the expectation value of the empirical spectral density is equal again to minus 2 divided by pi n. The limit eta going to 0 plus of taking the imaginary part of the derivative with respect to z of the limit when n goes to 0, 1 divided by n of the logarithm of the partition function to the power n average over the, the disorder for z evaluated at lambda minus eta, right? So far so good? Very good. So what is the challenge for today, for the rest of the, of the day, and we work in groups, is the following. Let us take a particular type of ensemble, which are going to be uh, Poissonian graphs, erdos urenyi graphs. Okay, let us take, so let us take our ensemble, ensemble of matrices. Will be Erdos Rennie graphs. Undirected, that means the connectivity matrix of the agency symmetric is symmetric. And I, uh, what I want to do is to calculate precisely the spectral density for this type of graphs average over the probability distribution that characterizes this ensemble of random matrices. So at some point, so the first thing you have to do, of course, is to, to take the partition function to the power n and do the average over the over Poissonian graphs. We have done this, right? We did it for the, we did this, right? Yes, for the, for the easy model. So mathematically speaking, it's the same, the same steps. The only thing that changes is the, that in this case, the dynamical variables are continuous real numbers, and in the case of the easy model, they are uh, easy variables. Okay, so at some point, at the end of the day, you have to show that the uh, nth power of the partition function in this case, this is equal. And the reason I can write it is because essentially all the derivations are the same, right? The only thing that changes is the type of variable that you have. So I know that this should give you, uh, or can be written in terms of a path integral over two functions, p and p hat of the exponential of n times a functional of p and p hat, where this functional, this s sub n of p and p hat, is equal to the following. n s sub n of p and p hat is equal to mm -hmm, a, the imaginary unit times the integral over a vector in, remember that the line below is a vector in the replica space. Okay, this x line below is x1 up to xn. Now, of course, x alpha a real number, before it was a uh, is invariable, of a p hat x p hat, sorry, p hat x p x plus d divided by 2, where d is the average connectivity in post for, for this ensemble of Poissonian graphs of the double integral with respect to x, with respect to y, of p x a p y that multiplies the exponential of the scalar product of x with y minus 1 
plus the logarithm of the integral with respect to this vector x of the exponential of minus z divided by 2 x vector square minus i pi hat x. Right? This is the first thing you have to show. Does this expression resemble uh, something to you? It's the same expression as in the ferromagnet. Why? Because the Hamiltonian has the same form. The only thing that changes is the type of variables here. Right? Now, the second thing you have to do, so this is the first thing, prove this. Yeah. The second thing you have to do is to derive the side point equations for this case. So that means I'm going to evaluate this average empirical spectral density when the size of the matrix becomes very, very large. So this implies that uh, when n goes to infinity, the asymptotical, the asymptotical behavior of that expression is okay, set n average you have to show that this is equal, well, show or say which, what are you going to do to, to arrive to this conclusion, to the exponential of n, s sub n, p0, p0 hat, where p0 and p0 hat are the functions that obey the following equations. Uh, where p0, p0 hat obey the following. Obey that minus i pi 0 hat of x is equal to d, the integral over y, p y that multiplies the exponential of x, the scalar product with y minus 1. And that's right, P0x is equal to the exponential of minus z divided by 2, x squared minus i pi hat x divided by the integral with respect to y of the exponential of minus z divided by 2, y vector squared minus i pi hat y. Uh, derive this. Yeah. And in this case, you, in this case, uh, you can't really call the variation of the of S the variation, because it's actually now a calculus of variations, right? Good. Now the third, uh, the, the the third. Uh, Part of this problem is the following. Now, if you go, are you with me? Now, if you go to the expression of the spectral density average over the disorder, blah, 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 you can show that asymptotically, you can show that for n going to infinity, yeah? The average over the disorder of the empirical spectral density can be written as follows. So let me see. Yeah, that's right. Can be written as um, mm -hmm. 1 divided by pi. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> the limit eta going to 0 plus of 1 divided by pi of the imaginary part of the limit when eta goes to 0, 1 over n, of the integral over dx, p0x, the sum for alpha from 1 to n, x alpha squared. All 
Alright. Go ahead. Big N and a small N? No. No, no. N is the number of replicas. Big N is the number of, uh, is the size of the matrix. Or in the context, in the mapping to a stack mech, is the number of, of dynamical variables you have. Or abusing of, with a vocal value of the number of thermal variables you have. Yeah, normally a small N in this notation is, in this context, is a small N is number of replicas. Big N is the number of variables that you have per, uh, 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 or the number of nodes or, or the size of the matrix. Very good. More questions? Sorry? Yeah, the y square is, uh, is the y square, no? It's, it's y, a scalar product with y. So, I mean, I mean, if you want to put it in components, but I was trying to compress the, 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 the form would be the sum for alpha from 1 to n, y alpha s squared. Yeah? Questions? And then, once you get uh, here, yeah, the tricky part, that would be step two, of somewhat, somehow the replica method, which is the, the answers that will allow you to make this limit. You see, in this limit, I have to do the limit of n going to 0 or 1 divided by n. But here, where is n? n is, n is in the dimension of, the, of this vector space, and it's inside the number of arguments this function has. So this is crazy. So how on earth you are going to do this limit? So we will see that if you take under a certain ansatz, you, you agree that this is crazy. Yes, very good. So we'll see that if I make a very simple observation, so I can write down an ansatz, a form that this function has to obey, and this will allow me to take the limit. Yeah? I'll keep the suspense for later. Questions? So in principle, I mean, this, this kind of exercise, exam, OK, OK, now between us, OK, don't tell, don't tell Mateo. No, the exam is going to be a bit easier, yeah? I'm not going to put this thing. But this, you should be able to do, this derivation, because I have, I have given you everything. The only thing you, ca you cannot do yet is this part, because I have not motivated how to take, how to make the answers for this object and where it comes from. But all this derivation is based on doing expectation values of exponential functions. Seriously, OK? So what are we going to do? You turn around, you look at each other, you create groups, and you start discussing. And between you, you discuss, and you try to come up with all this derivation. Yeah? And I go around. <laughs>